music. It's the love of music that brings us together. The love of music that forms the bond between us. For the next hour, join us for the love of music, presenting those aspects of music which excite, provoke, and inspire. Our host today is David Dubow, WNCN music director, pianist, educator, and writer on music. Here is David Dubow for the love of music. And how are you? My guest today is Mordechai Shahari, and he is a very fine pianist. Very recently, Edward Rothstein, when Mordechai played in New York, wrote, when a pianist controls the silences between notes, it is because he controls the notes as well. It's a very interesting opening phrase to review, Mordechai. How are you? Very good, thank you. It's good to be here. I'm glad that you've taken off time to come. I know that you're practicing some fantastic new paraphrase by Moritz Rosenthal, and I'm very excited to know we're going to hear the Carnival of Vienna by Rosenthal, and you have mm -hmm. touched it up a little for even more effect. We'll get to that. What does Rothstein mean when he says the control of silences? It's a very nice review of a very wonderful program you gave last September. Yeah, well, I was very happy to read it, because it is something that I had in my mind for a long time. Mm -hmm. I think that the rests are as important and maybe more important than the notes themselves, although on the page they look the same. Mm -hmm. All the rest of the world look the same. The rests but, and the notes. Right, but each one is different. Yes. There are rests really to rest and there are rests to prepare for something. And, and Actually, it's like in acting. Sometimes the great moment in an actor is when he doesn't say anything. Yes. This is if he feels something and the audience has good contact with him. Mm -hmm. Mordechai, who are the great composers, in your opinion, that understood best the value of silences, mm -hmm. of rests, of, of even the decay from the beginning of the sound to the last? Chopin in the B-flat minor scherzo comes to mind. He was a master there of silences. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, uh, as you said before, Beethoven, tremendous silences. Yeah. Actually, in the variations I'm going to play later, yes. it's right in the theme, the climax. Sometimes you look for the climax in a phrase and a piece, and the climax is not a note, it is a silence. This is a wonderful thought. Very few people discuss this, you know. Yeah. And Mozart also, fantastic silence. So few notes in a way, and so many silences. Yeah, Mozart wrote in one of the letters that for him the silences are like the background of a painting mm -hmm. that has to be clean. And sometimes you can see the background there, and it, it becomes part of the composition itself. And you see that people who just start to paint in in art school, they like to use all the paint they have, and they like to cover every inch of yes. the painting. <laughs> uh -huh. But a Matisse, he leaves, he leaves air in. Right. Mordechai Shahari is my guest today, and we have a wonderful program, a Chopin scherzo, number three, I think you'll right. play, right? Mm -hmm. And two works by Rachmaninoff, the Beethoven Variations, the 32, right? Mm -hmm. We couldn't do the Diabelli, you understand. Right. We'd already be over time, and the Rosenthal Carnival. Now, you... You were born in Israel, and you live here. You were a graduate of the Juilliard School, famous uh, American school. What about the training in Israel? Where, where do you stem from in that relation? Well, I was lucky there to study with a pianist by the name of Mindru Katz, that was uh -huh. a col colleague of Dino Lipati. Yes. And he gave me a certain kind of personal example of what a musician supposed to be. Mm -hmm. He was a very dedicated man, and music for him was the most important thing in life. Mm. Nothing else than the music itself. And also he, he knew a certain school of tone production mm -hmm. and physical approach to the piano mm -hmm. that it's very rare today. Just to give you an example, when I brought the F minor, Brahms F minor sonata to him, and I was prepared to play the whole piece, we end up playing the first eight bars for three months. <laughs> and lesson took two, three hours. So it was kind of very, very serious work without any consideration of time or prestige or all any other kind of, of elements. Then there is a responsibility that's always going on in your mind, and that stems really from cats. 
he was that big influence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then also was the fact that I left Israel and I came here, it gave me a certain ability to look back and to compare things. And I learned a lot from that. Mm -hmm. And in Israel, you won the 1970 Beethoven competition mm -hmm. and other competitions. One has to win these competitions, it seems, to, to even play these days. Is this true? Yeah, it's unfortunately true. Uh -huh. Although I think it has, it creates a certain element of sameness with the plague of people because instead of each person trying to find his own way, they're all trying to aim to satisfy a certain formula. Yes. Which is considered good, polite playing. Yes, and this is a danger, isn't it? Yeah. Mordechai, you are not a polite player because you're an original thinker. You think about the music first and foremost. When you played the Chopin Scherzo, of which you're fond of this performance we're going to hear, well, how do you come to your, your interpretation of this great masterpiece played by Rachmaninoff, played by Hoffman, played by everyone? Yes, well, I first learn it, and then I listen to other people play it. Mm -hmm. And if I feel that I have nothing more to say in this piece, I say to it goodbye. It was nice meeting you. <laughs> it's now mine, or you'll, yeah. I, I don't want to have anything to do with it, or what? Right. No, I learn from other people a lot. Mm -hmm. But you see, it's a little bit what happens today that people are extremely accurate in learning pieces, especially here in America. The training in, in this category is fantastic. Mm -hmm. They know every forte and every mezzo forte mm -hmm. and every crescendo and every accent. So I try to learn all these things. But it's just the beginning. Mm -hmm. I try to express feelings in the playing and to create a certain atmosphere, a certain emotional development, which is, I think, that's the basic of music. Otherwise, it's not an academical exercise. Yes. It's not an exercise of design, even. Yes. And it's not an exercise of being loyal to somebody who died 200 years ago. Mm. It's not. It's a tremendous responsibility to communicate something life that has a lot of value in it but main thing it has to be an emotional experience so you have to merge your individuality into the ideas of the composer and you do it always with the foremost concept that it must be an emotional experience absolutely i don't it must be aesthetic or emotional or both of them yes. when you play certain pieces by the bc it's not going to be an emotional experience but it's going to be a fantastic aesthetic yes a different e kind of experience of experience but i think that the pieces that we talk about like a scherzo or especially the Beethoven variations unfortunately there were pieces who were written by people who were not the most happiest people mm -hmm. in the world mm -hmm. these pieces are nourished by pain actually I understand. So the process is like this. One can learn the notes and learn the dynamics and learn everything and hope that the emotion will come automatically in. Mm -hmm. Like what people say, inspiration. It just suddenly will fly <laughs> and will come into the piece. I try to start from the beginning of the creation, which is a composer felt something that co gave him a motivation to sit and to write something and to go to this road. Now, some people are maybe don't like if I change something, but I say that if I don't have the right to change, I don't have the right to play it at all. Hmm. Why should I bother? It's an interesting point of view. And I spend more time with the piece than the composer ever spent. I'm sure. I mean, how many years Chopin spent with the first sketch? No, he had to get on with it. <laughs> right. He, and he didn't even have time to practice it. Probably not even the energy. His his student, Gutmann, he said, could play this scherzo more powerfully than him. He says his fist could go right through the piano in the first bars. And we're now going to hear Mordechai Shahori in the third scherzo of Frederick Chopin. <laughs>
Mordechai Shahari in a live performance, Grace Rainey Auditorium, 1976, beautiful performance of the Chopin, C-sharp minor scherzo. When we were listening, Mordechai was saying, now I hope this comes through to you, and it did indeed at the coda. You said what? I said it's like the sunrise effect. Yes, and, and you, worked, like you worked hard to get that in proportion. And then there were lots of silences going on since we were talking of silences. <laughs> Chopin is a master of silences, and we will not have silence right now. We will have a message from our announcer, and we will be back with more talk and more music by my guest, Mordechai Shahori. This is David Dubal, and I am back. Mordechai Shahori is a pianist born in Israel, lives in America now, plays all through the country, wherever you can, of course. Mm -hmm. Playing the piano, does it have much of a future, do you think? I mean, it's like a 19th century career, isn't it? We were talking about your, your idea of how to make music alive that was written 150, 200 years ago to a 1981 audience. Yeah, it's very, very difficult since music was in the beginning a very elitist kind of property. Today, it's very, very popular and... I think that the main problem is how to revive the philosophy and the atmosphere of the 19th or 18th century and take the good things of that philosophy and still keep it alive. I What are the good things of that? The good things that life in, in certain ways was not as easy as today. There was much more kind of emphasis of spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. I don't promote people to start believe with witchcraft again, <laughs> <laughs> but everything was very spiritual. When people loved, they loved very intensely. When they hate, they hate very intensely. You had to get married once, and <laughs> you couldn't do it again. <laughs> and people were very romantic. I mean, it, 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 was, it was another kind of existence. When I read the letters of composers, even when they order some curtains to their apartment, yes. they do it with vengeance. Yes. They didn't take... Chopin would have died if he didn't have the right kind of wallpaper. <laughs> right, there is a letter, all letter. Sure. Today, the saying in the street is, take it easy. Mm -hmm. you know, and <laughs> now, so today we live in a very, in a world that love to feel, to see what he has. We word of figures and materi material things. And it comes into the music in technically fantastic performances. You hear again and again people, very young people, play not perfect recitals. But the question is, where is the spirit? Now, the spirit is something we cannot see and we cannot touch and we cannot measure. And the piano recital, a guy comes to the stage or a lady and sits with the profile to the audience. It's very hard to communicate that way mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. And play some pieces and people listen. And I feel that it's very, very hard to communicate something under this situation. And I, I, I don't know, I'm sure that in your experience, sometimes you go to a recital which you are completely taken by the performance, something magical happens. Mm -hmm. The question, what is this magic? And I'm not sure the answer is in learning how many accents are in each bar. It's something very mysterious. I think by learning the period, trying to understand the composers as human being, maybe we have a chance to understand what a piece is. And to make a piece like a drama, not melodies. Mm -hmm. It's not rhythm. It's much more than that. Mm -hmm. It's like it, you cannot relate to a person on physical appearance. You, you cannot. You get bored with it after one day. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Very eloquent. Now, Rachmaninoff, our next composer, he was a man who had an awesome communication with an audience as a pianist. Mm -hmm. And, of course, as a composer, indeed. Some have the magic. And I think it has to be worked at, though. No magic is just floating into any individual. You have to read the letters of Chopin and Mozart. You have to know that Metternich had trouble waltzing and that he was still part of the, the minuet. And you have to understand where Beethoven falls in society. He's a composer that was actually 
made in a way by when he was born a great product of the French Revolution and of, of republicanism. Rosenthal, a piece that we'll be hearing, weaving Strauss waltzes. He lived in that Viennese atmosphere. Brahms would come up four flights to visit him and talk to him about his compositions that were being written. Johann Strauss would be very amused with the fugal stuff going on in the Rosenthal that you're, you're playing. And I guess that you yourself understand this and work in this way. Well, I'm trying. I think that musicians have tremendous responsibility to carry this tradition alive, yes. to keep it alive. It cannot be kept by books or, or by record. It must be kept alive by live people, by live people. from generation to generation. Taking music very seriously because of its beauty of content, or whatever the content means to the individual artist. We're going to now listen to your performances. Are these live? Yeah, everything We're, is live. Yeah. yeah. We're going to hear then the, the Barcarolle of Rachmaninoff, not terribly well known, and the E-flat prelude, very well known, right? Not the way I do it. <laughs> really? Well, I can't <laughs> wait to hear it. Mordechai Shori <laughs> performing for us two pieces by Rachmaninoff.
a very hushed performance, to say the least. Mordechai Shahori was the artist of the prelude in E flat, which you call a romantic prayer, but without sentimentality, a big, long structure. And yet, you take every possibility of the sentiment. And I like very much the barcarolle. And to play like this in a day and age of such uniformity takes a certain courage. Thank you. Beautiful. Really appreciate it. Beautiful playing. We'll be back and you'll be playing the Beethoven C minor variations, a work Beethoven said he didn't like. <laughs> well, he was drunk that time. He was drunk. <laughs> Here is our announcer. We'll be right back. And I am back. This is David Dubal with my guest today, the Israeli-born pianist Mordechai Shehori. Mordechai, Beethoven seems to be a composer that figures high in the repertoire of all musicians and certainly pianists. He wrote 32 sonatas and sets of variations which seem to be high points in, in the thinking of the late classical period. You obviously think this too. Absolutely. When you, when you have a set of variations, one so crystallized, almost like a shakon, mm -hmm. these 32 tiny little variations, how do you approach these since you're such a very original pianist? Well, I think that Beethoven here gave himself a handicap challenge. He said to himself, let me make a theme of eight bars, repeat it 31 times, 32nd time, I'll do it a little different, and let's see if I can still express something in this rigid kind of structure. The interesting point about that, that the, whenever it's in C minor, mm -hmm. It's very powerful, and whenever it, the theme is in C major, it's very delicate. Hmm. And it's very well designed, this piece. We're going to hear you design it now, the Beethoven 32 variations in C minor. Mordechai Shahori is the pianist in this performance.
the artist Mordechai Shahari, my guest, in a moving presentation of the C minor variations of Beethoven, each coming out of the other. And Mordechai, much sadness in your performance there, much drama too. Well, I I think the piece contains a lot of mm. a lot of sadness. Yes. We'll be right back after these messages and we'll hear something very different to say the least. Mordechai Shahari is my guest today, and we have heard him in Chopin Rachmaninoff Beethoven in a later program. We'll hear him in Liszt, Chopin, and other composers. Everything you study is a very special item to you, and I think that you think that pianists work their whole lifetime on a certain piece, as you were saying, Horowitz with his mazurkas over and over, little things added and subtracted until the essence is distilled. Well, I think that it will be wonderful to hear people who do it, and each one has his own repertoire, and each one specializes in a certain kind of pieces. That's the way it used to be. Everyone wants to play everything now, right? The complete works of... <laughs> yeah. I know. Of Moritz yeah. Rosenthal. It's impossible. It's absolutely impossible. Each person has his own personality. The pieces are so different from each other. Mm -hmm. And to try to do it, it's very, very difficult. So... I think, then be content with what you can do and just do it with love and over and over until you have it. That's right. It's like somebody who, who, who built the furniture once. He didn't pop out of the machine. He was in the workshop for many years until it was just right. Mordechai, tell me a bit about the piece you'll now play, the Carnaval de Vienne of Moritz Rosenthal. Perhaps a bit, if you know anything about this this legendary figure in the mists now of, of piano mythology. Well, I read a lot about him. I also heard him play in turn-of-the-century recordings. But uh, not, a, not in, in, in real public. Well, not. <laughs> <laughs> I actually was born exactly the same year he died. 1946. Right. Did you think I would know that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you know. <laughs> you see, I, I think that, again, I'm not trying to present the Strauss waltzes right. on a piano. Uh -huh. I was trying to, to use them as an excuse to explore the piano possibilities. Mm -hmm. And also, when the theme comes, I'm not playing them like the actual waltz. Mm -hmm. I'm playing them like a reminiscence of the waltz itself. Yes, yes. And it's a very clever work. And so you change certain little things, too, here, to make it more effective. Yeah, I thought, for instance, the ending, mm -hmm. I changed a little bit because I thought that after working so hard, you deserve a little bigger ending. I see. That. Well, Rosenthal would have certainly said, go ahead, chap, because even on his own recordings of this in, in 78 days, he, he changed whatever he felt like, of course. Yeah. It was part of that tradition. Let's hear... Mordechai Shahari in The Carnival of Vienna by Moritz Rosenthal.
Pianist Mordechai Shahori all over the keyboard and especially adding that ending to the Carnival de Vienna of Rosenthal. Mordechai, thank you for being here. I look forward to your next visit. Thank you. And thank you for listening. This is David Dubal. For the love of music, with today's host, David Dubal, WNCN Music Director. We hope you'll be with us when once again we meet to listen and exchange ideas. All for the love of music. For the Love of Music is produced by WNCN New York, GAF Broadcasting Company.